crisis of trust. It's quite an interesting exercise to put that into your favorite internet browser and see how many articles come up. But the question I guess I have for this community is, does it matter? To what extent does that really change consumer attitudes, consumer behaviors, citizen behaviors? And I think to some extent, we need to be able to measure trust. And I want to talk to you about that today. So as EY, we're bringing you data. I'll start by saying this is not audited, but maybe you'll trust me. But I started by asking our team who measure trust for a living to look at plastics. And we took a global picture. We analyzed a million online articles, blogs, uh, radio articles, all that kind of thing, uh, and look at positive and negative sentiment towards single-use plastics and plastic bags. So the first thing to call out is volume. So the size of the bubble represents volume. US and UK, you can clearly see a lot of chatter in 2018, this is all 2018 data, around the use of plastics. The US in particular, but also North America, positive not just about the use of plastic and the effectiveness of plastic as a, as a utility, but also positive about recycling. The UK, if you look at it, you can split it. So the sentiment towards use has changed dramatically through the year. Um, the sentiment towards recycling has taken longer to catch up. And then if you look at Southeast Asia, it's pretty negative, and it's all about Southeast Asia reacting to being the dumping ground for Western uh, societies on single-use plastics. And then if you look at it over time, you then see some interesting things. So Europe is green, and you can see there earlier in the year, EU declares war on plastic, pretty negative as it rolls through. Uh, Americas, mostly US, get even more positive in the second half of the year as the media focuses on specific initiatives to drive improvements uh, in use and recycling of plastic, so naturally positive. And Asia, you can see quite a big dip in the, in the middle half of the year again, down to this dumping ground um, phenomenon. But the question is, does this change attitudes? And you could be cynical and say, well, corporates will kind of do their own thing, but I have some good news. We looked at, we zoomed in on UK supermarkets and the reaction to some of this through the year. Supermarket A, I'll let you guess who this is. Supermarket A reacted really positively, proactively, and has banned single-use plastics in the supply chain by the end of 2019. Supermarket G uh, have banned single-use plastics, not until 2025, have been much more reactive. And more than that, there's a huge groundswell of, um, I'd call it outrage, actually, at the amount of packaging on the shelves uh, in their store. Now, as we get into this issue of long-term versus short-term, what does it do to their short-term results by suddenly flipping that uh, innovation that they've been driving th through their supply chain for so many years? So then let's take another industry, which is uh, artificial intelligence. And we looked at autonomous vehicles and artificial intelligence in the context of three big brands. And this uh, touches on long-term. Mercedes has a, what, 100-year history of delivering great vehicles to the public. Uber and Tesla have a great reputation of being truly innovative and driving that innovation. Mercedes are involved and call themselves pioneers in autonomous driving, but have a note of caution. If you go to the website and Google Mercedes autonomous vehicles, you'll see this uh, statement appear. There are still social and legal issues that need to be clarified. Whereas Uber and Tesla have been much more proactive in being the first movers. And you can see the massive dip in sentiment. I mean, this is off the chart in terms of the, the fallen trust. When Uber self-driving car kills the first pedestrian in autonomous crash. So I guess what does this all tell us? Well, trust, I think, does matter. We've done a, another piece of research. It was mentioned earlier about um, Paul Pullman Unilever. The embankment project for inclusive capitalism has looked at drawing the correlation between trust and financial performance, and that project has proven that correlation. So I guess if you take that crisis of trust as a signal, a positive signal, that our collective conscience is responding you take some reassurance that corporates will respond. You take the uh, advent of big data as a massive opportunity to understand and better uh, model the signals and how that impacts on corporate uh, behavior, then we can say trust does matter. Thank you.